Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the hotspot, which is now Robotina. The situation changes every day over there, luckily in favor of Ukraine. Our guys get more and more territory. Let's check out the timeline for the last 24 hours. So it was yesterday evening and it is right now. Let's see the Russian defense legend, all of those lines. So for the last day Ukraine moved towards this side also to the south towards Nova Prokopivka and expanding the bridgehead in this area. Plus, according to the other resource, Ukraine started to push more towards Nova Prokopivka from this direction towards the southwest part. Simultaneously, Ukraine has the attack vector towards Verboa, but Russia has their defense still capable to hold our forces and also they reply by firing some of the artillery shells. Let's go for more details over here. The big problem for us that Russia uses the aviation and the gliding bombs. You see that they are concentrated to stop our forces in this area, not letting our guys to go to Verbova. If our guys are in Verbova, it means that Russian defense basically failed. Before there was also the counterattack vector from Nova Prokopivka towards the Ukrainian forces in Robotina, but now it's no longer available for Russians. They concentrate all of the forces to stop our guys in Verbova. According to this resource, Ukraine recently gained this area under control and continued to move forward. It is difficult because still there are lots of the trees with the leaves in the field. During the autumn time all of those leaves will fall and Russians would not be able to hide their forces. Good thing. But also during the rainy season we need to take the roads under control, as many as possible. The countryside roads would be simply not available for the heavy armored vehicles. From what I see the Ukrainian general command beat on this direction, but today I was surprised to see one more vector of Ukrainian counterattack towards Donetsk. Alright, let's go towards that place. So, Makivka and here is Donetsk, the biggest city on the eastern part of Ukraine. And here near to Opetne, Ukrainian army started a counterattack from Avdiivka. So, we have the huge change for the recent 24 hours. It was yesterday evening and it is today. Clearly, you see that the Russian forces withdraw from those positions over here and moved towards Opetne. Now they are fighting for this small village. This assault operation from the Ukrainian army is happening very close to the Donetsk airfield. Let's switch on the other map, the satellite one, to show you everything. So this is the runway over here, this is the Opetne and the vector of the Ukrainian attack. The distance from Opetne to the Donetsk airfield runway is a little bit more than 2 kilometers, a little bit more than 1 mile. The Donetsk airfield was the castle for the Ukrainian army during the period of 2014, when Russia created so-called LPR and DPR republics and also took part in assault and the war against Ukraine. So our guys were holding this airfield for a very long time. Now it doesn't exist any longer, it was totally bomb. It was a nice cozy airfield out there, we enjoyed to fly and I personally flown many times to Donetsk, but as you see Russian peace brought the devastation to it, as well as to many of the Ukrainian cities. So let's go back to the Ukrainian counterattack. Indeed, it is successful, the grey area is already in Opetnev, the fighting is ongoing in this village, and what is running? Tents a separate tank brigade, it seems like that. And what is here? Somalia Battalion. That is how they call themselves in those DPR republics, saying that they are outlaw like in Somalia. Well, interesting direction for the Ukrainian counterattack. The biggest problem for our guys is is that there is the river with many of the lakes that creates the natural obstacle and you cannot simply cross it with lots of the forces under the constant Russian artillery fire. But it is not the only place where Ukraine has the counterattack. Ukraine also pushes near to Nevelsky towards the Russian positions. The counterattack goes directly over here, also towards Donetsk. 
Here's the different resource showing the airfield and two of the attack vectors of the Ukrainian army. Because of that lake line, I don't think that Ukraine will choose this direction for the full-scale counterattack towards Donetsk. It is very questionable, but also we have the lakes line over here. So Ukraine may advance until some point where it will be probably stopped by the Russian Federation. Or I might be wrong and Ukraine may definitely go towards the Donetsk airfield because as you can see Russian forces were forced to withdraw from their previously gained positions. Plus many of the Ukrainian drones were spotted over the Donetsk city itself. Speaking about the Bakhmut area we have still two of the assault vectors. One is here, the other one is over here near to Klushivka and Andrivka. Andrivka for sure will be liberated very very soon. The final are going there every day. Ukraine mostly uses the artillery systems to get rid of the Russian infantry. About the Russian vehicles, most of them were kaput over there. Russia urgently starts to build the new defense lines on the south. They say that Surabikin line is unable to withstand the pushing Ukrainian forces. For example, in village of Romanovska, where they already had the trench, it was dated in February, then they first built it. They also put the Dragon Tees. As you can see, it's the the new one that was built in July and August this year. So the Russian defense is quite flexible. Sorry, it wasn't the trench, it is the anti-vehicle ditch which they also had in Surovikin line, but it didn't help. This is the village where they built it and this is the Ukrainian assault. It's coming over here, over here, everywhere. The Ukrainian army has something that Russian army doesn't have and those are the Hammer systems presented to Ukraine by our allies from the United States of America. On this video, three of the missiles were launched towards the Russian positions, and Russia put the artillery systems near to the forest lines. All of the Hammer's missiles were programmed for their individual targets, the star as artillery systems. Russia had four of them, so as you see, everything is just kaput. The full video, by the way, is available on my Telegram channel, which you may find in the video description just below. I use the Telegram to share many of the updates, so join me over there. Ukraine showed the picture of the captured T-90 Emperor, the best Russian tank. Our guests trophied it near to Robotne village. Basically, Russians left it in the bushes and run away. This tank is in great condition and now will serve for Ukrainian army. Russia, thank you for land lease. Okay, Russian aircraft are tired again. You can see lots of those tires on top, even on the Russian tactical bombers. For example, this is the Sukhoi Su-34 bomber, which looks like the fighter jet. Why do I think that it is kind of the useless stuff to do? Because even if the drone hits the tire itself, there will be the shrapnel that will damage the airplane for sure. So if it has the tiny little dot in the aircraft skin, it will no go. Better way is to hide it behind the hangar, underground or in concrete construction. Let me show you what China does to protect their fighters. They have those huge concrete hangars with those interesting doors. It's like the sci-fi technology, unbelievable for the Russian state. Definitely China has those hungers and just look at the weight of those doors. They're able to withstand the huge blasts. By the way, the Soviet Union also had few of those kind of the hangars with the big wide doors, but just few of those were built compared to China. Because of the low number of those hangars, Russia usually performs the maintenance of their aircraft out there, but store most of their units just open air, but this time with car tires. Good news about the Leopard 1 tanks. First of those were delivered to Ukraine, so the units are already in Ukrainian army, ready to go. The army personnel already went through their trainings, we have logistics to repair those. However, I am not very optimistic about the Leopard 1 tank, because it has much lighter armor compared to the Leopard 2. So if Leopard 2 mostly saves the lives of our soldiers, Leopard 1 will not perform that good for sure. And even modern Russian tanks like T-72 and T-90 are in a way better than this one. But you know, it is the war, so we need every equipment, especially tanks. There is the report from the Ukrainian and not only intelligence services that Russia is planning 
to hit the Ukrainian civilian infrastructure, our power lines and power plants again during this autumn and the winter time. That is why they are mostly securing their missiles to store them for the winter campaign. This winter for Ukrainians could be more difficult than the last one. Soon there will be the marine military drills in the Black Sea near to Ukrainian border. The countries like Bulgaria, France, United Kingdom, Turkey and Ukraine will take part in those drills. Those are called Sea Breeze 2023. The area of military exercise is very close to the Naba River, and Russia continued to target the Ukrainian port infrastructure. The Telegraph goes with this article, United Kingdom planes protecting Ukrainian ships from the Russian attacks after Green Deal collapse, but actually they use only surveillance airplanes to provide Ukraine with information about the Russian drones, etc. The UK airplanes are not fighting against the Russian drones or any kind of the Russian military infrastructure. Indeed, we have the great help from the British allies, but this headline is just shouting loud. In fact, it is not the full-scale military protection of the ships that go to Ukrainian ports. For the second time, the biggest production factory of the Russian microchips was attacked in Bransk. It is called Kremny L. Well, this story involving Mr. Cringe, as I call him Elon Musk, just broke my mind. Indeed, he admitted that he forced the Starlink technical support to stop transmitting signal in the middle of the military operation that was conducted in Crimea. Yesterday I told you partially about this story, then Ukraine sent many of the drone boats to hit the Russian military ships, so those were out of the control because of the Elon Musk. What he does here is the interference into the international affairs of the United States, which is illegal by the way. Anyways, Starlink provided their product to Ukrainian army, for free or not, doesn't matter, and they are ruling it, so they may switch it off whenever they like. Before this situation happened with Elon Musk, he was in contact with the foreign affairs of the Russian Federation and they told him that in case Ukraine would use the drone boats, they might respond with the nukes. They might respond with nukes. So probably Elon Musk believed the Russian officials. He was scared that Russia may respond targeting the United States of America, but all the Russian officials say is basically not true. But Elon Musk is like the adult child. He went from the hero to zero right now, mainly people start to disrespect his actions, even though he still remains one of the richest persons living on our planet. I read lots of his cringy posts about Ukraine. Elon Musk, you are doing everything wrong and you completely lost your mind. Hopefully this guy will be prosecuted one day for the failed Ukrainian military operation that could have potentially stopped many of the Russian ships that target Ukrainian territory with the caliber missiles. Also what worries me is the escalation between the United States of America and China over the Taiwan island. There could be the real military conflict and China might cut all of the internet cables that are leading to Taiwan. So what Elon Musk might say if the United States Army would need the internet connection? I think that those billionaires should not be involved in military or any kind of the geopolitics and do the Tesla stuff or SpaceX. Plus the Starlink, which is actually a good feature, but there should be no any restrictions for the products that are critical for the United States of America and its allies, like Ukraine. Now to the other possible conflict. Azerbaijan media showed this video today, filmed on the drone. This is the Armenian convoy that is going to the east side of the country. Now both of the sides say that their counterpart sent the reinforcements to the border that may escalate the tensions. Definitely it may spark again and Russia simply doesn't have enough resources to perform their peacekeeping mission successfully in that case. But honestly I think that Azerbaijan wants to get their territories back, that is what they say. They want to use the situation where Armenia is not that strong as before and Russia is weak too. Well, what can I say, I do support the internationally recognized borders of every state 
in the world. The Ukrainian Special Service showed the pictures, not detailed pictures, of the new Ukrainian drone that may fly for more than 800 kilometers. So what we may see, it has a few of the humps on the top, probably for electronics, transmitters, receivers. The nose is kind of the aerodynamic, I would say. The wing is standard rectangular and those are probably flaps because ailerons are located at the end of the wing. This airfoil ends over here and then the wing construction continue for sure. One more picture, that's all we have. It looks like the fighter jet from this perspective. I do not see the propeller, by the way, could it be the jet drone? And from this perspective, the wing is not a rectangular any longer. It has the swept wing design. So I bet that it's the jet drone. You may see that it doesn't have the rudder, the full surface of the vertical stabilizer is actually the rudder itself. That technology is mostly used for the jet airplanes. If you fly on the low speed, it's not really necessary, so you have the full vertical stabilizer, the fin and separately the rudder. So swept wing design, smooth shapes and this rudder construction tells me that it is really the jet drone. Also, I think that it may carry some weaponry inside the fuselage or under the wings. I would be very surprised if it is the kamikaze drone, because based on what I see, it is very expensive to produce it. The North Korea launches its first submarine that is able to carry the tactical nukes. It is the diesel submarine and missiles usually stored over here. To launch those up, the submarine should stay on the surface. Totally, I counted 10 of the hatches, so potentially 10 of the missiles could be launched from the submarine. Some say that the submarine was supplied by Russia and was just modernized by the North Korea. It could be like that. Why there are still those regimes in some of the countries on our planet? The future generations would obviously laugh about it. This is so cringy. This guy, the uniform and the medals of those soldiers or generals. The North Korea is like a parallel reality country. The Soviet Union during the worst time of its existence. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my channel, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.